you get your new Badger stock out of the box, there's three pieces that need to be put on it before you start assembling it on your rifle. This is the back part of the butt pad that's not on there. It's got four studs on it, and there'll be four screws going in it. Uh, all you do is line it up on the studs, which sometimes you have to finagle it around a little bit to get it to fit, but it snaps right on, as you can see. Then you have four one-inch screws. I always start when I put mine in on this bottom one, and that pulls it down tighter. So when you put your butt plate on, you've got a good snug fit there. And when you put these in, you don't have to screw that down real tight. All you have to do is snug it because it's screwing into that plastic. These will never be taken off again. Once you put it on there, that, it will stay on there for, unless you have some bad trouble. Uh, get something hung down in there or whatever. But there shouldn't be any reason to ever have to take this back off is what I'm saying. But... Uh, once you get the screws screwed down in and get them snug, that's, that's all you have to do to it. And then you'll snap your butt plate on. And uh, then you'll be able to start assembling your rifle onto the badger stock. But this does have to be done before you start putting your rifle on it. That makes it one solid piece. Then you can put your butt plate on for your storage. Snap that forward, that locks her in. Then you have two light rails if you want the light rails on there. If not, you don't have to put them on there. But there's little brass threaded grommets in there, and they are machine thread. I have one half inch machine thread screws. You line your holes up. I always start both these screws before I tighten either one of them down. Seems like it makes it easier to me. As sure as I tighten one of them down, then I have to loosen it a little to get the other started. So you can do it however is best for you. But you screw those down until they are tight. That puts your light rail on and then you just do the same thing on the other side if you want both light rails on. Okay, the last thing you do is take your clip retainer, pick it up, slide it right down in there, take your machine thread screw, put it in, tighten it down until it stops. Then you can put your clip in if you're using a 795 or a clip fed gun. You don't have to do this on a Model 60, but it does make it look a little cleaner whether you're using a clip or not. Then you're ready to start putting your uh, gun on this new Badger stock. Makes you a nice short little bullpup design. One other thing I want to tell you, uh, all these Marlin semi-automatic rifles, are the same from here back basically. Your holes are the same. But if you have a gun that was made in the 70s, this trigger housing right here is three eighths of an inch longer on the back. The holes, the screw holes, are the same. Let me get up here where you can see. The screw holes are the same in these triggers, but this extends back three eighths of an inch more. So if you're going to put one of your older rifles on there and use the older trigger out of it, you'll have to grind off about three-eighths of an inch of that trigger. But now, like I say, these screw holes will line up so your actuation rod will be right. You'll just have to take some off of the back of it if you have a really old rifle. That's the only difference, that's the only change they've made in these guns, is that's a little bit longer and uh, newer guns have the last shot hold open. So on your last shot, it stays open. When you reload it, you push the button and it goes shut. This is a Marlin 795 stainless steel. It is a clip-fed gun, which means it has a magazine clip that you put your shells in, you put in the bottom of it. 
Once again, before you do anything to a gun, the first thing you need to do is open it. Actually look down in the barrel and make sure there's no bullets in it. There's no bullets in your clip and it is empty. Then you can proceed taking it apart, cleaning it or whatever you want. Right now I'm going to show you how to take this gun off of its original stock and put it on the Badger bullpup design. It has the trigger forward, it's shorter, has storage in the butt plate. When you put your butt plate back on, you snap that forward, it's sealed. First thing we'll do is take the 795 off of its original stock. You only have to remove two screws on it. They're a pretty simple design. Front and rear. The front screw is shorter than the back screw. So when you get ready to put it back together, you can remember you have one short screw and one long screw. The long screw goes in the rear. Now on the 795, to remove this trigger housing, you have to roll it sideways to get it off of this action. It comes off just like that. You have to work it a little, roll it, maybe pull it back to get it off here. This is your trigger. It's longer than the Model 60, as you can see. It has the hole in it for your clip. Once you take that off, your 795 barrel action will pull off the stock, just like the Model 60. Take your Badger stock, pull this piece out. It just lifts right out of there. That will allow you to get your actuation rod out. Take your trigger. I'll come up so you can see what I'm doing again. Always make sure that your rod is setting with it sticking up. Set it right down over your trigger flush. Flush with the top of it. Once again, you just screw this down until it's snug. You don't have to put a lot of tension on it because it's screwing into polymer. It's not going to go anywhere. It will stay right there. Before you put your trigger back in your stock, you have a cover plate. Where you move your trigger forward, you'll have a hole there. This part sits right in and covers that real nicely. Makes a good smooth transition. Sometimes they're a little bit hard to snap in, but they will snap in. You can see that makes a really nice looking plate without the hole in it. And then, right in front of your handle grip, you stick it back in. Take your three quarter inch flathead or pan head screw, put in the back. All you have to do is snug it down. You have a half inch flathead screw, goes in the front. Put your trigger in so it's not going to go anywhere. Your rod is hooked up. This piece is rounded on the front, squared on the back. It always goes in with the round part forward. It will snap down in. Your rod will not fall out. And that's what it should look like when you get done with it. Then you pick your barrel action back up, set it down against the back of the stock, and, and work it in. Sometimes this little nipple here will give you a little aggravation. You have to turn it sideways, but it snaps right back down on there. Look, make sure your actuation rod is against your pin where it's supposed to be, right here. So when you pull your trigger, it makes the hammer drop. Once you see that that is where it should be, you take your cover plate that has the clip hole in it because you're going to have to put your clip back in this gun. When you put this on, kind of roll it over. It'll go down under the quick clip release. 
it'll snap right down. Take your small screw, put it in the front. Long screw, original screws you took out, goes in the back. Once again, just snug them up. You don't have to twist them off. Then you take your barrel clamp. You have two machine screws that will fit it. I usually start both of them before I tighten either one of them down. Sometimes you have to put a little pressure on this to line up your holes with your threads, but not a lot. Once you get them started, just snug them up. Put your clip back in. Make sure it's empty again. You're ready to go hunting. You can put a spare clip on these 795s in your handle grip. When you shoot your last shot on a 795, it will lock itself open if you have the magazine in there. When it does that, you pull that down, it will be locked back in the lock back position. All you have to do then is push this button. It will put another shell in the chamber and you're ready to shoot again. Thank you.